Humans of the Cardboard, welcome back to Just Nuts, guys. Today, we have our de facto very final TCG reveals for Cyberstorm Access. This set is coming out in two weeks, uh, I think on the dot, um, two Fridays from now, probably, uh, you know, 12 days if you're, if you're going to an OTS store. Um, so these are going to be the TCG exclusives we have yet to see, as well as some of the OCG imports, mostly just V-Jump promos, it looks like. Um, and then as well as we also, we also got full reveals on, I think, most of the rarities, or at least the higher rarity cards in the set. So we'll skim over that right at the end as well. So let's start off with the, with the uh, imports here to start. We've got these cards. These cards have already been covered on the channel. They're nothing too crazy. They're just uh, mostly jump promos that have been uh, ported over in this set. This is Wish Dragon. I think it summons tokens. This is Votus. Votus? Votus? I don't know. I don't remember what he does. Uh, Adelaria of the June Moon. She actually is an interesting little extender spellcaster for sure. Uh, there was another. This was another one that was kind of interesting. Kitty Tail, Mystical Beast of the Forest. Actually, not a terrible card. Um, Baromet, the uh, Sacred sh uh, Sheep Shrub, and then these, which I I don't recognize these. So my guess is these have been haven't been like have been waiting a while to get finally printed to the TCG, but I just don't remember where they're from. Uh, this is Reincarnation of the Seven Emperors, Seventh Emperors, and Rebirth of the Seventh Emperors. Uh, just obviously exceed support cards there. Um, from there, we move to some new cards. Let's get into it. Starting off here, we have Moisa Knight, the Comet General. Very cool looking artwork. He looks awesome. He is a light level one warrior scale 11 pendulum monster his pendulum effect says if you pendulum summon a monster place this card on either the top or bottom of the deck um okay very cool monster effect when you draw this card you re you can reveal it during your main phase this turn you can conduct one pendulum summon of a monster or monsters from your hand in addition to your normal pendulum summon you can only gain this effect once per turn so essentially you get a second pendulum summon you just can't pendulum summon anything from the extra deck on that second pendulum summon it's got to be from hand only it's not bad um it's one of those cards where I don't think inherently this card is amazing, but uh, you always have to wonder, like, is there a specific combo line? And pendulums have very generic searching capabilities and setups, so being able to just maybe search this card generically and reveal it to get that extra pendulum summon could be a thing. I think about archetypes that uh, have a bunch of pendulum monsters that plus when they're summoned. So, like, summon a monster, he searches you another monster, but because you already did your pendulum summon, that other monster kind of just sits in hand. This gives you another pen summon from hand to get the rest of those bodies out. Interesting card, for sure. Not, not, not garbage, but interesting is what we'll leave it at. Next up here, we have Golden Cloud Beast Malong. I love the artwork on this guy. He's really cool. He is a light level 6 Dragon Synchro Tuner. Tuner Synchro, that's a really good. And 6 is a really good level as well. He is completely generic. Any tuner plus any non-tuner, really good as well. If this card is special summoned, you can increase or decrease its level by 1. Okay, cool. If this card is sent to the graveyard, you can target one face of card your opponent controls. Return it to the hand! Wow, we you can only use this effect of Cloud Beast Ma Long once per turn. So not only does it adjust its level if you summon it to then make it a seven or a five to allow you to go into different um, you know monsters from there. He's a tuner, so then you don't even need another tuner to synchro climb. And when he's sent to the graveyard, by the way, this is sent to the graveyard, period. Not from field. This is a new dogmatica punishment type target. Any of those at different effects. Um, that can just send something from extra deck. Like, if you... the Wow, people might actually be like, hmm, do I play two Intis or do I play one Intis, one Golden Cloud Beast Ma Long in case I, you know, want to spin an extra deck monster instead of uh, summoning uh, or instead of popping something and letting their stuff float and go to grave. That's really... This is a good card. This is just a card that I think we'll see play and it's a common, apparently. So, very, very cool. That's awesome. All right, next up here we have Imperial Princess Quinn can carry. Um, okay, she's a dark rank five Cybers, Exceed effect monster. Two level five monsters on the material, so it is generic. You can attach any uh, one material from this card, then target a level five monster in either graveyard, which I believe can be the monster you detach, I think, because it's do this, then do this. So I think, uh, I hope that you're able to do this even if you don't already have a five in grave, but I don't know the exact ruling on that 
Special summon it to either field. Okay, cool. I'm assuming most of the time you're summoning it to your field, but I guess it depends. Cool, though. If a face-up level 5 monster you control is destroyed by battle or leaves the field by an opponent's card effect while you control this monster, um, you can add to your hand or special summon one level 5 monster from your deck. Ah, that gives a little bit of extra utility to summoning stuff to your opponent's field. You could summon something to your opponent's field, attack over it, boom, that would trigger the second effect to either add or summon any level 5 from the deck. Not a bad card. This is a card where, like, if an archetype came out and it's like, you know, look, think about Kashtira, right? If Kashtiras were just all fives instead of sevens, like, this could be a card where you looked at it and you are like, hmm, that's not a bad Kashtira card. It's a pretty good Kashtira card. Nice. Um, so if we get a level five archetype kind of in the same realm of Kashtira, this could be an, a really interesting card. I think this is a good card to, like, keep a hold on and just uh, hold it for later. Next up here we have Pendulum Pendant. This is a normal spell card. Banish five face-up pendulum monsters from your extra deck as cost to place one pendulum monster from your deck or face-up extra deck into your pendulum zone. You can banish this card from your graveyard, then target one card in any pendulum zone, reduce its scale by one. You can only activate this card once per turn. This card is terrible. It takes so much setup, like... And a card like maybe there's a combo like again kind of like the guy at the beginning it's not a crazy card on its own it doesn't plus you in fact it uh it's a one for one i guess i guess it depends on how you how you look at face up pendulum monsters it's fine though maybe there's a combo where it comes up in but other than that i don't think it's inherently great enough on its own it needs five face up pendulum monsters in your extra deck to like do anything which is too much uh, then from there, we finish up with the final TCG exclusive, which is How Did Die Get Here? More, uh, is it Unexpected? No, Unexpected Die is the um, the other trap, I think. This is a uh, Die Greffer, I think is his name. Warrior Die Greffer. This is a normal trap card here. If a monster you control is destroyed by your opponent's attack or card effect, so just, okay, gotcha. You can't crash it, but as long as it's their attack or their card effect, you're good. Place it face up in your field zone. Place face up in your oh sorry place face up in your field zone one field spell from your deck with a different name than the cards in the field zones then reveal five monsters from your deck that can be special summoned with different names your opponent randomly picks one for you to summon a special summon also shuffle the rest into the deck you can only activate one how did die get here per turn that is so much going on um, I mean but if we're talking just pure value I mean technically off of this card you're getting a f any field spell from deck that's already not in a zone and you get to summon a monster from deck now the monster is random you have to have five you would think worthwhile monsters to summon which is not always easy uh, a lot of decks have main engine monsters. i mean think about naturia runic runic has no monsters in the main deck uh naturia yes you could reveal cricket and uh camellia uh, but you don't even really want to reveal snow, uh, sunflower. So like, like okay, like some decks just really don't have. That's that's like one of the extreme examples, obviously. But there's definitely decks where you're like, ah, I have like three, maybe four monsters I'm good to summon. But outside of that, they have to be different names. Fun card, interesting card, but probably not good enough overall. It also requires your opponent to kind of play into it by going after your stuff, which they probably would. But it's such a passive card. I don't like cards that have to wait for your opponent. Uh, to kind of give you, you know, the avenue to go with them. But, yeah, not bad. I would say out of these cards, uh, it's mostly the two extra monsters. I think this card's really solid. This card will see play 100%. And this card probably won't see play right now. But, like I said, as soon as we get that archetype that's, like, rank 5 turbo and it's actually really good, this could be a card that definitely comes up. And then we get to the final stuff here today, which is just looking at some of the rarities just so we know for sure. Looking at these here, we look at Guiding Quen, the Virtuous, starting with the... Oh, this is only 9 of 10, by the way. This isn't all of them, but this is most of them. Um, so, oh, oh, never mind. I was going to say, is this going to exclude the Gold Prides? But no. I So there's going to be a couple missing here, but just keep that in mind. Guiding Quen, the Virtuous, um, Albion, the Sanctifier Dragon, and Despian, Lulu, Wa Lilith. A lot of secret rares coming from the Albaz lore. That is tough, because I wanted to get Lulu, Wa Lilith. Um... I don't really care about the others. Vicious Astroud or Astraloud. We kind of figured this guy would be here. This may be one of the... If you're talking about a single card, this is one of the top cards that's going to, by itself, like be played in a good amount of decks, making the uh, 
Visa Starfrost engine even better, particularly Scare Claws get a huge buff with this. Chaos Angel, obviously a secret rare. I can't believe in the, well, the OCG is entirely different, but Chaos Angel, we kind of knew this guy was going to be here. This is not surprising at all. Uh, everyone's going to need like one or two copies of this for the most part. Field spell for Monodomes, of course, all the field spells are secret rares. Roller Baller and Better Luck Next Time. I guess this makes sense. This is the new fusion and the new really good spell card searcher, I believe. So that makes sense for the most part. Nothing too crazy. Uh, and I guess I skipped over this guy because he's just not that important. But I believe this is the ritual, not ritual, uh, the spirit monster. Suma, Sumaha Kutsunagi, the Lord of Swords. I believe he's a spirit monster, but he's spirit and not a good one. So, yeah. Moving on into the ultra rares. The ones we know. Ice Jade, Ron, Azerin. This is a crazy spell card extender. It's like a one card synchro 10. Or one and a half card by pitching any water. And there's a lot of waters that float when they're pitched. It's really good. The Monodome, a heart monster. Room heart. Those generally end up being ultras. That makes sense. Ringo Worm. The dragon guarding the hundred apples. I love that they kept his name very similar to the OCG. He has such a fun name. I love it. It's a really cool card. I want to mess around with this. Uh, ultra rare. Ultra rare three ofs can get kind of expensive. Just depends how good they're going to be out the gate. Bistial Dispater. This was a card I could have guessed to be a secret rare as well. I'm glad. I'm kind of glad it's not. Hopefully that'll mean it's, you know, a little more affordable there. Um, Mana Diem. Uh, Prime Heart. This is the Extract Monster. This card's pretty cheap, so I don't think this one really matters. Libromancer Origin Stories. Kind of a weird one. Uh, didn't expect this to be high rarity. This could have been a common, 100%, but fine and then we have the three more gold prides pinballer chariot carrier and that came out of nowhere um this is the level five extender guy this is the new rank three this one makes sense this is one of the better cards out of the new support and that came out of nowhere um i don't remember which card that is but uh you know cool more stuff for them we get two supers this is huge super heavy samurai prodigy wakashi wakushi is a super that is awesome i don't care if it's five dollars i would rather pay five i would rather pay ten dollars for a super than 25 for an ultra i don't care about future you know projecting what it could be and how it's gonna you know how it's gonna fluctuate and you know relative value all that shit the fact that i just only need to shell out at max probably you know 30 bucks for a play set of this guy i thought this guy could have easily been a, a secret and just been like a 50 dollar secret because this deck looks or this engine particularly looks crazy the bistro luber whatever teller knight liren glad that some of these teller or at least she is going to be in here as a um as a hollow i, I have a I have a sense that this is the only teller knight i see here i have a sense that we're going to see other teller knights maybe in uh, ultra probably not secret but uh probably in the ultra maybe the extra deck monster at least but cool uh, we have Harvest Angel of Doom. That was a fun card. Wannabe, like kind of a trap support deck. Cool card there. The new Bee Trooper uh, uh, fusion card. Pretty cool card for sure. Super Heavy Samurai Commander Shana Wo. Uh, cool there. Uh, I think that's the new Synchro, I want to say. Um, Protect Code Talker. Poop. S-Force uh, Night Chaser. This card's pretty cool. I'm glad S-Force got a hollow on their new Link 1. It's actually a pretty nice card for them. Tri-Brigade Roar. I think this card's a little bit underrated. I'm actually kind of excited to mess around with this card. Tier, uh, time tearing, uh, tearing, Morganite. Cool to see this card here. Wish Dragon, Vadis. All these guys, I believe, are all of the TG exclusive we just looked at. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, all of those uh, OCG imports actually all end up super as well but keep in mind eight supers missing here five ultras missing as well as a secret rare to kind of round those out but at least giving you a heads up on that i think the big win here is going to be wakushi being a super that's going to make this this deck and engine actually much more affordable it's going to mean essentially if you can just get your hands on barone and the um the axel synchro stardust the deck should actually be pretty cheap relatively speaking so that's pretty cool um yeah that's everything for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. As always, let me know your thoughts down below, particularly about the new ECG exclusives and anything in particular about the uh, rarities as well. If you want to throw that in there, I'm definitely down to check that out. But uh, let me know your thoughts down below. I'd love to hear it. I'm out of here for today. Subscribe if you have not yet and you want to see more stuff from your boy down the line. Peace.